Hello, everyone. So it's now 22 past 11. I would say we will wait uh, three more minutes and then we will get going just to see if uh, anyone else will join and then we will start. Okay. In the meantime, if you could, guys could uh, turn on your cameras so it will be a little bit more interactive session. I would appreciate that. Uh, for the ones arriving now, uh, just to let you know that we will be waiting two more minutes and then at uh, 11.25 we will start with the workshop. Uh, this session is meant to be very collaborative, so please if everyone could uh, turn the cameras on, uh, I would appreciate that. Then I will share a link for Miro uh, because we will be uh, collaborating a lot. So please don't be don't be shy and uh, turn your cameras on, so we can all uh, be in this together. All right, so let's get going. Hello, everyone. If uh, you are seeing my screen, please, if someone could tell me something, if you're already seeing my screen, or just do a thumbs up, so I would know that everyone is seeing the screen. OK, a lot of thumbs up. Nice. In that case, I will start. So first of all, introductions. My name is Nuno Castro. Uh, I took a bachelor degree in computer science and I started working at a startup and uh, like uh, everyone that's worked in a startup uh, you don't do only the thing that you are hired for you start doing a lot of things and uh, it was at the time that my curiosity started to arise and I tried several things uh, one of them was being a scrum master uh, but then I also went to other companies where I tried things like sales project project management and uh, not, I, I didn't work only in startups, but also in big corporations. And at the moment, uh, I'm an agile coach at Agile Thinkers. Okay. Uh, on my free time, I also like to do body work. So if any one of you would like to get some uh, uh, some good tips about waves, you can also ask me in the end. For today, our agenda is going to be more or less the following. First of all, we'll go with what is Kanban just a brief introduction to get everybody on the same page then we'll go to the kanban core practices we will use here technique of teach back then we'll do the key takeaways and then in the end will be time for questions and answers okay all good thumbs up if all good for you guys all right nice so let's begin with what kanban is and for that what i'll ask you guys to do is on, on the chat uh, i share with you a mirror link so if anyone could please go to the mirror board. There you will find uh, uh, basically two, uh, a lot of panels, but two of them is what we're going to use in the beginning. 
one is for you guys to answer what you already know about Kanban. And the second one is for you guys to list to answer what, what their learning objectives for this class. For this, I will give you more or less five minutes. Then I will review uh, all the content uh, with you guys. And then we will move to, to the next step. OK, cool. All right, I can see that there are already six people here. If all the others could also join, the link is in the chat. Nobody's talking with me, so I'm not sure if, I, if I'm missing it. So if someone can just please unmute themselves and tell something, I would appreciate so I would know that uh, I can listen. Otavio raised the hand, so Otavio. I sorry. Uh, was was a mistake. Uh, I'm, we are listening. I'm listening to you very well. Okay. And uh, Thank I'm you. just trying to join Miro. Okay. All right. Okay. We only have six people in Miro. So please, if all the other schools also join. Where is the middle link? He's asking Luis is in the chat. I will send it again. Here it goes. Okay. I will do a screenshot of Miro maybe. So everybody can see what's going on. All right, 12 people now on Miro. Just a tip, it's easier if you use sticky notes. So here on the left, you have a sticky note. And if you are having trouble, you can use this one that I just created. Just grab, drag it to the board and put it there. And there are already people messing with other things. Let me just lock this. Right, I will give five more minutes for you guys to put what are your learning objectives and what you already know about Kanban. I can see that people were here. Playing with Miru. With the board. We are doing this. Please, guys, try to focus on the questions and on these words. All right, let's start to review some content. It's a framework used to implement Agile software dev. Work items are usually represented visually on a board. Work is done in cycles. Okay. More things. It uses a board with several stages, having tasks assigned to team members, going through those stages until they're done. Another framework to achieve performance improvements how to calculate correctly for teams. I think this is a learning objective 
not what you already know about Kanban. A place for a work item card, set of practices, process for agile development. It's more self-managed than Scrum. It's okay. Someone just wrote the thing, a lot of sports. Okay, learning objectives. How Kanban could help maintenance kind of team. Back to the basics, review question and what I already know. How to calculate correctly for teams. Okay, understand how to improve Kanban with approach. One new idea on using Kanban. Understand more about Kanban. Learn more good practices. Okay. Needs. Be very disciplined. Okay. No more about Kanban practices. Someone put it. I do not know. You do not know what you want to learn from this class. Okay. All right, I think it's enough. So, moving on. From now on, and in the end, we can have a little open discussion about what Kanban needs. But for now, what I want you guys to remember is that Kanban is a method to manage knowledgeable work with principles and practices to guide you on managing and improving work using Kanban boards, visualizing your work and its flow, and it, it's in a Kanban system, controlling the process in the work to ensure the work flows smoothly. So for things is Kanban is not just a board on the wall uh, with cards for you to visualize a work, it's much more than that. It's uh, inside of a system, and that system needs to be maintained by the team in order for Kanban to work correctly. If you just think this is just a board on the wall, uh, with a few columns, uh, you probably didn't apply Kanban correctly. Uh, and for it to be uh, well used, you need to be used in this system uh, with a broader knowledge than just uh, the, the, the visual part of the word. For you guys to understand from where Kanban comes from, um, basically it shares the same values as Lean. Uh, the main difference here is that Lean was used in the manufacturing uh, especially it began in Toyota, uh, where they are trying to remove all the waste that they had uh, in their factories. However, when you are talking about knowledgeable work, it's a little bit more difficult than that. Uh, it's not just, you cannot uh, reach some point where you have no waste, where you have 100% efficiency. There's more than that. So that's why uh, David G. Anderson uh, decided to use Kanban in knowledgeable work is the main difference for Lean. We use Kanban to manage knowledgeable work. Uh, he pioneered it in uh, Microsoft and is used today in many service industries uh, across uh, several departments. It's not just for software development, but also marketing department, human resources department, even boards of administration can use Kanban to manage portfolio. You can use it almost anywhere, okay? So far, any questions, anything that you guys would like uh, to, to ask? No? All right. So moving on to Kanban practices. So first of all, Kanban is all about workflows. What we try to do here is to map a workflow and then work around that workflow. We try to optimize this flow. We try to make it more lean. We try to make things more visible. And a workflow can be anything. For example, in a real life workflow, it can be something like the, I turn my alarm clock off when I wake up in the morning, then I will go take a shower and get dressed, then I will have breakfast and then I will start working. Another flow, for example, in an HR department could be, I'm looking for a potential employee, I will hire the employee and then I will do the onboarding on the employee. Another workflow could be, for example, for the development, that is the one that probably you guys are more used to. It's something like, I would write a user story, I will refine the user story, then I will develop the user story, and then if you are in a very bureaucratic company or a one with a not a very good software development, um, I will not say skills, but uh, test automation, uh, you will have something like uh, deploy to, to testing, deploy to second phase of testing, deploy to third phase of testing, and then finally you reach production, okay? And now going into 
juice for this uh, um, workshop, Kanban C core, core practices. So basically in Kanban, we have uh, C, core practice, C core practices, are them visualize, limit work in progress, manage the flow, make policies explicit, establish feedback loops, improve collaboratively and evolve experimentally. And what I will ask for you guys to do now is based on the people that are here online and are participating on Miro, I will do some uh, breakout rooms. Let me just open here. I will do some breakout rooms and the task will be simple. I will give you guys 50 to 20 minutes. Uh, we will split which one of the groups will grab one of the core practices. And I will give you guys time to just go Google and talk within yourselves what you think the practice is. Okay. Then you will have to uh, make one representative of the group and the, that representative will teach back to the other members of the workshop what they think that score practice is. Okay. During these 15 to 20 minutes, I will jump in the, all the breakout rooms to help you, to guide you guys and help you guys produce the content. And then we will go to the core practice all together. Okay. Sounds good. Thumbs up if yes. All right. Just one thing, uh, I see that there are some people here that are logged in but not participating actively. So if you have any problem with the breakout rooms, just let me know so I can adjust them fast. Okay. All right. So here we go. But first of all, I will assign them manually. To make this, maybe to make this easier. All right, so breakout room number one is Carmen Pedigão, Fernando da Silva, Luis Teixeira, and Marta Mendes. So guys, tell me which one of the core practices you want to pick. If you want, I can put the slides so you guys know what I'm talking about. So guys, I will need you to interact with me, otherwise it will be difficult. So Carmen, Fernando, Luis, Marta. Uh, no, flip a uh, flip a coin. <laughs> okay, flip a coin. So let's go with the first. You can go with visualize. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. So breakout room number one, visualize. Second breakout room, André Pinheiro, Mario Silva, Rui Pedro, Pereira. Which guy, which one do you guys want? Is any of those guys here? All right, we'll go back there in a few minutes. Breakout room number three. André Silva, Luis Monteiro, Telmo Araújo, Yana Shavchenko. Uh, manage the flow. All right, manage the flow for breakout room number three. Breakout room number four. Elsa Pita, Nun Silva, and Rafael Basto. Which one do you want guys want to pick? All are fine by me. Sorry? Anyone is fine by me. All right, so we'll go with limit work in progress. Breakout room number five, Tiago Bartoletti, it to much well. Which one do you guys want? Hello, guys. It can be the feedback loops. All right, feedback loops for you guys. Isaac Souza, Mario Pereira, and Octavio Coreta. Which one do you want, guys? I would like to participate in the make, the, make policies explicit, please. All right, make policies explicit. And just uh, breakout room number two. André Pinheiro, Mario Silva, and Rui Pedro Pereira. You guys will go with the other the other last one right
All right, let's start okay. and then uh, I, I will pick. Okay, nice. I would say if no one answers, I would pick that one. All right, I will open the rooms now. Then I will join each one of the rooms um, to give you guys tips and see how things go. And uh, I would say 20 minutes for this. So we'll come back at uh, midday, more or less, or two past midday. Okay, so see you guys in a few minutes.
Ah, pois, eu não sei, eu estou aqui sozinha. Olá Mariana, tudo bem? Olá, tudo bem. Eu tenho estado aqui um bocadinho sozinha neste... Pois, neste... já reparei. Pois. Desculpa que entretanto um, o pessoal às vezes, foi entrando para as rooms e tu não deves ter ficado em nenhuma. Mas vamos fazer uma coisa, está aqui uma breakout room que não tem ninguém. Eu vou entrar nessa breakout room e já vejo essa pessoa para não estar a responder e ficou sozinha. Vou ver se ela também está sozinha. Se estiver, juntamos aqui tudo okay. no room e fazemos isso. Não faça contigo, está bem? Perfeito, ok, obrigada. Nada. Ah, ok. Olha, se calhar vou ali. Ah, Alô, Mariana. Olá. Desculpa, estou aqui só a mudar de lugar para não haver barulho. Sem problema. Olha, há um colega que está no breakout room 2, mas também não está a responder. Uh, por okay. isso, ficamos aqui os dois com a core practice que ninguém pegou, que é Improve <risos> Collaboratively e Evolve Experimentally. Basicamente, deixa-me só aqui mandar uma mensagem para todos. Primeiro. Uhum. Breakout rooms, broadcast messages now. If you want, yeah, you can. Ok, então ficamos aqui os dois. Se quiseres ligar a câmera para, para nos vermos melhor e nos conhecermos, se calhar é mais fácil. É mais fácil. Ok, tudo bem? Ok, tudo, tudo. Até porque somos, somos primos, não é? Provavelmente. Pois já há tantas. <risos> Olha, então vamos fazer o seguinte. O uh, que tu achas que é então esta core practice do Kanban de melhorar, experimentar e evoluir? em conjunto. O que é que tu achas que isto que significa? Porquê é que esta core practice existe? Porquê é que ela é importante? Um, 
melhorar e evoluir no âmbito do Kanban, ou seja, na, na utilização do, do Kanban? Ou em que sentido? Se calhar não tanto do Kanban, mas um, no Agile, o que é que geralmente... O que é que nós fazemos Agile? O que é que... O que, é que é um, o Agile é um processo empírico. O que, do que, uhum. o que é que isso vem? Ou seja, o que é que isto significa entre, entre nós? O que é que achas? Sim, Qual é que é a grande diferença, por exemplo, para o, do Waterfall para o Agile? Tens ideia? Uh, sim, no, no Agile acabamos por procurar aqui dar mais alguma responsabilidade e autonomia às equipas, tornando-as mais dinâmicas, mais ágeis, uh, enquanto no Waterfall há uma estrutura muito mais rígida de respostas a hierarquias e acaba por tornar os processos é. mais complexos. E diz-me uma coisa, e geralmente em waterfall o que é que tu fazes? Tens big upfront analysis, development durante muito tempo, faço teste grande e entregas alguma coisa, certo? Estás está simulizada com isso? E em sim, Agile, sim. geralmente, como é, que, como é que achas, como é que funciona? Tens ideia? Uh, sim, o processo acaba por ser muito mais curto, ou pelo menos mais uhum. vezes mais curto. Ou seja, procuramos okay. trabalhar pelos tais sprints, não é? De uhum. forma a fazer entregas mais mais simples, se calhar ir melhorando à medida que vamos recebendo feedback e nesse sentido ter um, um produto ou um serviço com maior qualidade e mais orientado para o cliente nesse caso. Ok, mais, mais curto e com mais tempo para ter mais feedback e o que é que nós no final de cada um desses um, ciclos pequenos, o que é que nós tentamos fazer sempre? O que é que, o que, é que acontece em todas, normalmente em todas as práticas? Algo que é uma retrospectiva, certo? Ah sim, exatamente. Ok, sim. e o que é que fazemos nas retrospectivas? Um, pegamos naquilo que, que tem sido desenvolvido e que fazemos uma espécie de um momento de, de feedback e de perceber o que é que correu bem, o que é que correu mal onde é, onde, o que é que há para melhorar e onde é que há para melhorar Ok, então voltando à pergunta inicial que é esta core practice que é deixa-me aqui procurar uh, melhora colaborativamente e, a, e melhora a experimentar porque é que isto é importante e como é que isto se aplica então aqui neste, neste ambiente do Agile, tendo em conta que nós fazemos curtos, curtos ciclos, temos sempre que buscar feedback, porque é que achas que isto é importante? É assim, eu penso que isto é importante de forma a também termos mais qualidade, apesar de, uhum. apesar de okay. da, da ideia também ser ir melhorando, acho que que o facto de também tentarmos aqui melhorar essas experiências e temos estes momentos, a ideia uhum. é melhorar a qualidade e tornar as pessoas mais, com mais noção para, para o trabalho que estão a desenvolver, com mais okay. uh, foco. Ou seja, vamos andando juntos, vamos experimentando coisas novas a cada ciclo, experimentamos e alterações. Partilhar conhecimentos, partilhar, uh, partilhar conhecimento, recolher uh, feedback do cliente e com isso uhum. em equipa irmos experimentando coisas e evoluindo em conjunto. Okay? Exato. O que é que isto nos permite no final? Um exemplo que podes depois partilhar é, é, é um bocado, não sei se tu sabes, mas por exemplo, um míssil quando é lançado, o que é que o míssil faz? Imagina, tu lanças o um míssil e ele vem, 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 e ele está-se a perguntar à base, estou no caminho certo? Estou no caminho certo? E se estiver no caminho certo, eu continuo nesta rota. Ele pergunta, estou no caminho certo? E se a rota uhum. estiver desalinhada, diz, não estás no caminho certo, e o míssil ajusta. Que é para quê? Para quando ele tentar bater no alvo, ou seja, mesmo que não bata mesmo em cheio, também não vai bater ao lado, nem aqui Exato. nem aqui, mas há de bater aqui perto. Então... Uhum. O waterfall, geralmente, o que é que acontece? É, tu lanças o míssil e diz o míssil, é para ir para o meio. Só que não lhe dizes mais nada. Tu já já a derrota. E podes estar a fazer isto tudo e, de repente, pois, pode estar lá. Ok, tu não há de não. É, faz um ciclo pequeno, perguntas, estou no caminho certo? Exato. Estou ou não estou? Progressivamente, e nos orientando para o caminho correto. Exatamente. E no meio disto tudo, o que é que nós fazemos? Em conjunto, em equipa, experimentamos coisas novas, evoluímos enquanto pessoas, estamos sempre a colher novo feedback, ok? E é por isso que é uhum. importante esta experimentação, este conhecimento que vamos tendo mesmo para nós enquanto equipas. E quando conhecemos mais do produto e experimentamos coisas novas, nos faz crescer enquanto equipa e estar alinhados para quando chegarmos à altura de entregar alguma coisa ao cliente, ser pelo menos algo que ele uh, vai estar à espera de, de ter, ou, ou semelhante àquilo que é a necessidade Responda dele. A necessidade dele. Antes do que chegares lá e de repente entregas um bolo inteiro de uma coisa e ele... E não era lá, nada aquilo. Ele pediu de bolo de chocolate, tu deste-lhe bolo de cenoura. Peço. <risos> certo. Okay. Boa. Deixa-me só ver aqui porque acho que entrou mais alguém, mas depois voltou a sair. Não, Vitor. Olá, Vitor. Tudo bem? Olá, bom dia. 
Sim, tudo bem. Bom dia. Ok. É só mesmo Sim, estar aqui a assistir e a ver um bocadinho, desculpa. Estou a trabalhar ao okay. mesmo tempo. Isto é... Ok, o pessoal está em breakout rooms agora e eles têm uma task. Depois vão ter que fazer teach back uh, aos colegas, mas pronto, também já chegaste aqui um bocadinho tarde, eles já devem estar ah. a terminar. Uh, vai ouvindo então mas depois tanto que quiseres entrar e colaborar ligar a câmera, estás à vontade para nos vermos todos e ir aqui com a tanto feedback Ok, está bem, mas só estou por aqui a ouvir e é como eu digo é só com um ouvido com o outro, estou ao mesmo tempo a trabalhar, está bem, desculpa uhum. Ok, sem stress Obrigado e Então e Mariana, aqui para terminar, nós basicamente quando fazemos Agile o Agile é, é um processo empírico aqui significa que é, nós vamos aprendendo à medida que vamos andando Uhum. Uh, e por isso é que há este tal, tal try, inspect and adapt eu experimento, colho resultados adapto, experimento, colho resultados adapto, a cada interação uhum. sempre a equipa, vamos experimentando, vamos andando uh, porque isto é a melhor maneira nós garantimos que estamos no caminho certo e que estamos a evoluir com a equipa em vez de fazer o, o contrário do waterfall ok? certíssimo tiveste assim um overview, alguma questão, alguma dúvida? Não, assim, no momento não, mas já foi, já foi uma boa ajuda. Ok, caiu assim um bocadinho para que as ainda ficaste com aquela que é capaz de ser das, das, das mais difíceis, sentar no contexto das outras, porque ela cola muito bem é que o contexto das outras todas. É um desafio. E ficaste, e ficaste sozinha por cima. Exato. É stress. Olha, entretanto, o meu computador está prestes a atualizar e eu espero que ele não se desligue. Ok, ok. Desligar, olha, okay, é só ficar a nota. Tá bem, tá bem. Portanto, deixa-me só ver aqui como é que estão os teus colegas, está bem? Vamos só dois segundos. No entanto, uma coisa que também podes ter em mente foi aquilo que me estavas a falar de quando tu dás mais autonomia às pessoas e às equipas. Um, Tu não estás à espera que, por exemplo, a liderança emerge aos todos os níveis, que as pessoas consigam tomar decisões mais autónomas. E muito é. disto de melhorar em conjunto também vem à base disto, não é? Eu quero que a minha equipa seja autónoma, consiga tomar decisões, que venha uma adversidade e que ela se consiga adaptar. Um, e por isso, por exemplo, as redes expectativas são muito importantes. Olhámos para a semana anterior, que é, como é que trabalhámos, como é que estava o nosso processo montado, o que é que correu bem, o que é que correu, o que é que correu, o que é que correu mal, adaptar. Uhum. É. Okay. só aqui fazer um broadcast para todos. Two more minutes. Então diz-me uma coisa, tens alguma experiência já com alguma prática de gel, zero experiência, estás a começar agora? Vou começar agora mesmo, Eu comecei há três semanas, mais, mais coisa menos coisa, portanto ainda é okay. tudo é. informação e tentar assimilar tudo. Ok, muito verdinha ainda então. Ok, está bem. É completamente. Certo. Ok, já temos mais um participante de volta. Fechar as salas, okay. em 60 segundos, a top sol de volta.
tens estado a ouvir a, a conferência? Sim, desde, desde dia 28, desde que começou. Há alguns temas que me fazem todo o sentido, há outros que ainda tenho que arranhar um bocadinho para os perceber. Mas, mas estou a gostar muito, okay, okay. Mas é mesmo bom agora bom. logo no início ter logo este, este boom. esta quantidade de informação, ao menos é logo desde o okay. início. Olha, vou fazer uma coisa, vou partilhar contigo um vídeo de um português que teve um alertinho de toque aqui, que eu acho que ele explica muito bem o que é que é Agile. Ah sim, agradeço. Eu depois, eu depois no final partilho contigo, está bem? Já está aqui o pessoal combinado, todo a voltar. Combinado, Obrigada. Nada. Ok, alright guys. I guess everyone is here again. So for the second part, it's going to be easy. I will share my screen. We will go practice by practice. You guys will do the teach back to others. And then I will complement uh, with some more slides and information. Sounds good? Yes. All right. So teach back number one, visualize and limit whip. So let me see, breakout room number one and the breakout room number four. So number one first with limit whip. Guys, feel free to take, take control. And I'm not sure if you guys used Miro. Okay, none of you used Miro. So, okay, feel free to start and tell your colleagues what you guys got on visualizing limit whip. Uh, hello all, I can start with the limit whip and then uh, go back to the visualize because I think they, they both connect uh, very well. So in terms of limit whip, what we've concluded is that um, using a Kanban is a, a great way to show how much work we are doing in progress and um, if we have either too much uh, work in progress, or if the work we're doing right now will take too long, and so delays can, can happen. Uh, the main uh, issue here is to identify all the resources we have available, uh, thinking more on a managerial side, and all the tasks that must be performed. And one of the major issues is to estimate how much time each task actually will take because it depends on many factors. Um, on any way, if tasks are smaller, the, it will be more easy to, to do the deliveries. And the main, main thing, by putting all this information in the board and making it more visual, we can identify if anyone is uh, overworking or if delays are expected because either there's too much um, backlog or too much work in progress. So I can uh, pass to, to the team that's doing visualize because they're more or less the, the related. Okay. Timid visualize for go. Again, I take the ball. So, what we discussed and talked about on visualize is mainly transparency. So, the board uh, allows everyone to see the flow uh, of the system, uh, understand the, the flow of the system, see the work that has, that has to be done, that is in progress, that is complete or not. Um, and uh, oh. So, and allows what uh, we call a sense of ownership of the, of the work. So uh, the board allows to someone, a team member or someone to go to the board and say, I own it, I will take responsibility for it and moves into the board, puts their, their name or their uh, pen in there and takes ownership of that work. Um, it also allows to everyone to see how the flow is working. So if we have a problem on the system, everyone can see it clearly on the board and everyone can, well, some people can stop what they are doing and try to unlock the, the flow of the board. So having that is like having a, snap, a real time snapshot of the work. So it increases 
transparency at all levels, even for even for managers, if they want to know how the work is doing, they go and see the board. They don't need to talk to everyone to see how is the work doing. <laughs> so okay. uh, that's that's on Visualize, I think. That's what you got. All right, so Visualize and Limit Whip. Um, why is this important? So as I told you guys here, when we use Kanban, we talk about knowledgeable work. And in knowledgeable work is not something that you can see. You know, it's not, uh, you don't have physical inventory. What you are delivering normally, it's information. So by putting it on a paper, on a post, it, it turns things more visible. Um, if I say that I'm going to deliver some piece of work, but there's no way for me to, to see it, it's uh, very common for me to forget about it, uh, to be in the backlog and uh, no one will take care of it. So visualization is important. Not only for me to not forget things, but to know what is in progress, to identify if something is with an impediment or not, if it's blocked. Um, and is a way for us to can understand the flow of our work and what is uh, uh, what are the impediments in that flow that are keeping us from moving forward and keeping progress. Using that with limit whip, we limit whip because you want to give focus. We don't want to do be multitasking. Multitasking uh, allied with not having visualization is a, a very good way for us to not deliver any work. Basically, we'll start everything but will not finish anything. And one of the Kanban values is uh, stop starting, start finishing. Okay, and this this two core practice together work very well because of that. Okay, okay, and uh, for example, I can give you an example why visualization is important. It would be the same as, uh, for example, when we travel and I'm trying to explain some sightseeing place that I, that, I, that I saw to a friend. It's completely different if I'm just telling it and describing the place or if I show him a photo. With a photo, things can turn to reality and he can make in his, in his head a much clearer image of uh, what I'm talking about. And here is the same thing with the post-it, uh, with a, an electronic card on a Jira board, for example it turns things more um, physical, let's say, uh, and help us understand what's going on at all times uh, with our board, okay? And now for a little exercise, tell me one thing, what do you guys see on visualization on this board? What are the visual elements that you can identify on this board, for example? Let me just do something here real fast, like this. What kind of visualization things can you see on this part? Color coding. Okay, color coding. More. Different stages or types of work. Okay. Can you see, for example, whip limits? No. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes okay, no. Because they are, they are implicit in the, the board as they uh, it is created. So. If you put many tasks in the that board, post okay. it will fill rapidly. Um, that could be a whip limit, for example. Okay. More things. Um, there are some bullets: red, black, blue, and um, I don't know what does that mean. Could be types of in in impediment, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, some policies. Some policies, okay. Yeah, some policies. Tell me one thing. Does this feel a little bit confusing? Yes. <laughs> right. So, all the visualization is good visualization? There's no uh, sense of flow. There's no sense of flow, okay. Good, good, yes. Yeah, I good. think there are three lanes, three distinct lanes there. You think, but you're not sure, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, it might so be a single there, lane divided within three levels <laughs> just because the, per, the, 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 the first line is enough. one thing then the, the second part the vision part seems like a vertical mm -hmm. the vertical board not the vertical board all right so basically not all visualization is good visualization okay that's the point that i want to to tell you guys uh, in the same way that just having a carbon board won't cut it you can see by this example just putting things on the wall on a random uh, without any sense will not help you and sometimes it will make things even more confusing okay 
So not all things are good. It's good to have a flow, to understand the flow, to really understand where the whips are, and to build a board that makes sense and everybody can understand. Okay. Moving next on this one, what are the kind of things that you can visualize? Um, There's more sense okay. of flow here. Okay, yeah. more sense of flow. Can you understand whips? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I if think. it's the number circled in red, probably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Cool. Um, if I ask you guys, who is on holidays? Can you understand this with anyone on holidays, for example? Yes. <laughs> yes. One in the okay. top left. And if, if everyone is sick? Also, there's nobody, fortunately. Okay. <laughs> More things that you can understand from these words. I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand the, the, the one on the right side of deployment, on the mm -hmm. top of the, the lane. Okay. Fix, fix performance issues. Probably people that are fixing performance issues, maybe giving support, could be something like that. And there are three types of uh, post-it the very there are three colors low. for, for three post colors. that that could mean uh, some specific Different text. Things. Okay, um, yeah, very well. Okay. And there's okay, things so... with different uh, symbols, like if it's different persons doing. Okay, so like tell post. me, is visualization just important to have a card describing the work or it can be much more than that? For example, you can put people that are on holidays. It's much easier for me to see if the team is uh, on full power or not. Uh, I can see that they have million bugs to solve. I can see that there are different types of work uh, coming in. So basically visualization is not just uh, a, a paper that represents some type of work, but I can play with a lot more things that will help me as a team to understand what's going on and what is the situation, okay? For example, for this board, I can look and I can understand several things that will help me. For example, if I will get in in the morning to see what I need to do next, it's much easier. I can see who's on a holiday, if I'm is sick, I can see the type of work, I can see the whips, and it's much easier for me to jump in and maybe help someone instead of picking new work, okay? On this one, what do you see? Um, yeah. There's both. There's priorities. Okay, priorities. Each More task things. as an assignee. Each task as an assignee. Can you identify something is with an impediment, for example? Uh, yes, there are a bullet with a hay in the exactly. red, in the red uh, card. I don't know if there is more information about lead time or cycle time. In this one, I don't think so. We cannot see that. I'm, I'm, I'm in the phone, so <laughs> <laughs> not easy to. Okay. So no, I don't another... see the whip. The whip okay. limits. Yeah. Whip is, is is there. Yeah. Yeah. Is on the top. In the gray color. But gray light color. The the whip is like uh, available. Or how do you how do you read that number? For ready, for instance, ready to start, two out of zero. I think in this case it's two out of zero. Probably they didn't put uh, whips on it. No. Okay. Yes, I don't. That's why you I don't see whip limits. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Is, <laughs> you can also use visualization, for example, with lanes with priorities. Expedite something like this top priority, an error in production. I need to fix it right away. Then standard priority and low priority. Another way of doing visualization. Um, and for example, in this case, what did, did this team decide to do? Put tasks that could be checked when it's done. Okay, checklists. Checklists. More. 
three flows, three clients? Or... Three clients, okay. So they okay. decided to split the flow with clients. Okay, well, well done. What about the whips in this one? I see. There's a limit two. set. Yeah. Okay, there's a limit in there in progress. In big, for example, three out of six are in progress. Okay, we have checklists also to understand if something is done or not, to help us uh, know what we should do or not. Right. Nice. And what about this one? How is the whip being limited here? By user or by person? Exactly. By user or by person? Here on the right, you can see, for example, project whip. Um, in the first one, there's none, but then as admin, it has 100. It's doing currently nine. On the second one, for example, is with doing 10, but he has no project whip as an admin, it can only be five, so he's over whip. All right. And what about this one? What do you think that this team is doing? That's a war room. Uh, That's a obey room, probably. <laughs> Uh, each each yeah, work could be fun. a business or area. Uh, okay. We are working on business or area. Mm -hmm. So this could be a, a organization board that crosses all the board. Air, uh, business areas, for example, in IT mm -hmm. and uh, further. Uh, could areas. several different teams, several different projects. Mm -hmm. So this could be a value stream, for example, right? And then things will flow from one board to the other. Yeah. Okay. Very visual, right? Very easy to understand, for example, where a feature is, in which department, and in which team. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what do you think are those little balls in the below the boards? Uh, the whip counters, probably. Oh, the? like loading board. <laughs> loading the, board sorry. meaning that how far along they are in the project, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, more ideas. If the if the balls are on top, they they are they reach the whip. <laughs> no, okay. So basically, the two are efforts. No, it's efforts. Uh, each 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 ball represents two hours of efforts. So basically, each team would know uh, where are they uh, wasting more effort. EVP means for improvement things, all the rest are related with project or client, and it's a very visual way for teams to understand where their effort is going. Am I spending my time doing things for clients? Am I spending my time doing things to important projects? Am I spending my time doing things to improve the flow of what I'm doing? And this is another way to use visualization uh, to help us during our day to day. And here to finish, what do you guys think about this part? So it's a simple board. Yeah, uh, it has the, the policies that allows one one thing to pass to the other column. Okay, so, yeah. it has the yeah. pull policies to allow us to see when things go from one to the other. Okay, very yeah. well. It also and has more? color coding, different stages. So we have flow, we have whip. Mm -hmm. Very clean board, right? Yeah. Everything is very clear. You can understand the whips, you can understand the policies, you can understand the impediments. It's very easy to understand what is being done and what is done. Okay. Very clean boards. All right, so basically there's several ways that we can remit limits. Actually, we can remit limit by person, by state, by flow, by classes of service, a course and try a board. You can be creative with this. There's no one specific way to limit limit. For example, just see what is the one that works better for your team and try. Go for one sprint or one iteration and try. See how it goes. On the other one, try some, something different. Iterate, see what the results are and go like this until you find what is your cadence that makes sense in the context of your team. Okay. Now, just for you guys to understand why important <laughs> Limit makes sense, a small video here.
So guys, tell me, which whip do you think is the best? Two or three? Three. Three? Why is that? I think because we have three stages here. And I think we can get more clients through with three than we do. All right, so actually, let's see what conclusion we reach. Okay, so basically what we can conclude is two or three, actually they are both pretty good uh, and it will depend uh, on what you are looking for. If you want to deliver a little bit faster, but with shorter, uh, deliver a little bit faster, but with less throughput, less things, you'll go with two. And if you want to deliver a little bit, uh, a little bit of cycle time, but with more throughput, we'll go with three, any of them is, actually pretty good it's just a mention for you and your team to find the sweet spot and choose the right candles for you there's no one that's better than another it will depend on your context in your cadence and what you feel that your team uh, works better with okay teach back number three manage the flow who was the team that's got with manage the flow that took yes all right take the stage 
So the goal for this would be to having a continuous flow optimization targeted to improve the time to market while ensuring quality. Also, and in other words, create value as, quick, as quickly as possible. And this would be done through inspection, adaption, and transparency. Having an eye out for bottlenecks, blockages, and inefficiencies. And for this, the artifacts that would be helpful would be uh, a board for the visualization, as we've seen before. Um, and that's pretty much it. All right. So basically, when I talk about Kanban, it's all about the flow, right? What we want here uh, is to be as predictable as possible. And we want that work items will pass through our system uh, always the same way. We don't want to be unpredictable. We don't want to be, in, to be working on small batch item, then on a less small batch item. It's all about managing the flow and not resources, for example. Uh, normally, what happens in companies is, let's say we have a team uh, with the four developers. What they do is, okay, so let's put a whip of four because one of each, one of those develop, developers can get uh, one item. But if I do that, what am I doing? Am I, am I managing flow or am I managing resources? What do you think? Resources? Is yeah, it's resource optimization. And uh, do you think that uh, by looking at, for example, the limit whip, that video that we saw, does it make sense or it makes more sense for us to look at the sweet spot of uh, the throughput that we want to achieve? And uh, instead of trying to have people busy at 100% of the time. Apparently it doesn't make sense to make them busy all the time <laughs> all right <laughs> the better example that i can give you for something that is managing the flow is for example curling i guess everybody has seen this in the olympic games that's for example what they are trying to achieve here is to put that little piece of uh i would i don't know what are the name of that but basically they are trying to throw it to reach the end goal is to do to test to pass the flow and there's only one person throwing, the other ones are just cleaning the things, but what they are doing is basically cleaning up the flow so things can run smoothly, okay? And there are not three people throwing things at the same time, but basically what they are doing is they are managing the flow, they are arranging things around um, the, their work so things can pass smooth truly and they can build and uh, know what are their candidates, okay? And I can give you a very good example on why, for example, limit whip can make sense. Here, for example, is a cumulative flow diagram of a team that in the beginning was working without any rules, no whips, no nothing. And uh, what do you guys think that happened? Let me see here. For example, in this first iteration, this is the work that they were doing. These are their done delivery rates. If things would continue like this forever, what you guys would think that will happen to this team? They will never finish anything. They will never finish anything, right? Because if you see, for example, if I would add a line here. Here, and I would say, so this is the cadence as they were starting work. And this was the cadence as they were delivering work, right? So if you cross a line big enough, <laughs> what would happen? Those lines will never cross, right? So there will be a point in time where basically they will have a lot of work in progress and nothing being delivered, right? Yes. So yes. more or less here around iteration two, this team decided that they wanted to put whip limits and nothing could be, let's say only five items could mean progress. Let's see what happened then. So here, 
Now that the case is stabilized, and they decided to put whips, and their down ratio increased a little bit. By looking at it, if I would ask, for example, when is this team going to deliver this amount of work here in blue? Do you think that that could be predictable now? Um, As a first guess, it would be easier to predict than the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Because you basically, would be, doing, would yeah, be yes. doing some assumptions, but yes. Exactly, some assumptions. It's basically, what happened to this team is here, they had no whips, they had a lot of thoughts, they are just starting things, they were managing resources because, okay, if you are free, if something is blocked, you can start doing something new, and you're just throwing things to doing, doing, doing until there was a point where they decided to manage the flow. They said, okay, no, there's a whip limit. We can only have five things in problems. If an impediment comes in, we'll have to deal with it. And automatically what happened is they start delivering more work, more things start getting done and they got more predictable, okay? And for example here, this is the, the backlog of a team uh, of things that were done. When do you guys think that this team take, took measures and start with limiting the whip? Around December. Oh, no, no, wait, it's February. Like that last spike, probably. Yeah, probably around February and, and uh, April, right? Yeah. Yeah, so basically that's like what happened. This team decided to put whip limits and then work in progress start to come down drastically and they found their candidates. And for example, if I show you this graph, that it means is it the throughput of a team, okay? Uh, where in the bottom I have the, the days that something took and on the left, I have the number of items delivered. So for example, in zero days, they delivered 32 items. In one day, they delivered more or less 50 items. Is there anything that you guys think that you can tell me about this team? <laughs> All right. The project is getting over. What about now? OK. So no, basically yes. with all this data, I can understand a few things. For example, 80% of the work okay. is delivered in 12 days. On average, this team is delivered things on five days. And the longest observer item took 75 days. So let's say that I want this team to deliver something for me. Uh, what you would say it will take? How long it will take? 12 days. Expect for right. five days, but you can... Expect for five. Yeah, probably I will deliver something in five days, but with 85% confidence, in 12 days I will deliver something to you, right? Yes. This is predictability, okay? Now, let's go into here, because we are running out of time. Make policies explicit. Who has something to say about policies? I guess Otav, you know, you no, took this I, one. Isaac. Isaac. I guess he had to leave, so someone else from the team would have to take his place. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you, you, you could do it. Okay. Can I do it? Yeah, sure. Um, we put some cards here in Miro to try to synthesize what could be uh, a good policy for have good policies. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, the policies uh, are uh, mainly to, to create a stable flow of work and, and to get um, some kind of rules that are um, established in, uh, inside the team 
with everyone according and they must be visible and available to everyone um, so some some examples are um, how the backlog is organized or who is responsible for handling the backlog mm -hmm. how to deal with the expedites if they have a, a a lane for itself or not, uh, how to create in and out policies, and for handling impediments. Um, with concrete policies, defines how to manage these impediments itself. All right. So basically, policies make policies explicit. I like to explain policies as they are, for example, um, the culture that your team builds, actually, because uh, normally people think only about uh, operation policies. For example, the definition of ready could be uh, a very well-known policy. The definition of done is another very well-known policy. On Kanban boards, for example, we have uh, pool criteria. Let's say, for me, uh, as a business analyst, to pull something to my board, I want the definition already to be to be done. But for me as a developer to pull something from the business analyst, I want uh, all the requirements to be there. I want uh, um, items to be written in user stories for in format, for example. I want to, to have acceptance criteria. And these policies help us as a team to better understand each other. Because, for example, uh, for me as an individual, if I set up a meeting for 9 a.m., uh, for me, it would be OK to get there five minutes late. But maybe for someone on my team, uh, being five minutes late, it's something that is outrageous. And uh, for him, what makes sense is to arrive five minutes early. And uh, if we don't make this kind of policies explicit for everyone to agree on um, when we start with, well, probably in the first meeting, you will handle it on the second too. But then after six months, one year working together, we will have the kind of things like uh, people not gearing very well together because that guy is always gearing uh, late to meetings. I cannot uh, understand why he does that. And if we don't make this kind of things explicit from the beginning, and don't we try to uh, help each other on how to work and tell each other explicitly how we want to work together, we run um, in a problem that a culture uh, between us can emerge that is one that we don't want to one we don't want. Uh, it could be a culture that is completely in align with our goals. Uh, so it's much better for us to sit together and try to create these policies to, uh, in, um, in, in, as a team. A good example of policies uh, that I can give, for example, if I'm a foreigner, for example, I'm Portuguese, but if I go abroad, let's say I'm in France or I'm in Germany and I find someone that is Portuguese also, I can connect immediately with that person. And why? Because there's a set of... Uh, policies, let's say, that I know that, that that person has because she came or he came from the same place as I came. So basically, uh, we grew more or less with the same culture, with the same rules. So I can connect immediately with that person because I know that there are a set of rules that that person has when I communicate with them that will make interaction much easier for me um, with, with that person. And policies should work the same way as a team. We should agree on how we want to work. We should agree on how we want to communicate. And now we want to express ourselves so this culture can emerge. So when I arrive to work every morning, um, I can just sit there and uh, do my work and not have to worry about all the little things like uh, who is going to start a meeting, uh, when are you taking breaks, how do we want to handle retrospectives, how do we want to handle meetings that we need to have, how do we want to handle support to production. And all of the things are things that make sense to be in a policy because it will help us go along the way and uh, interact better as a team okay so far guys any questions anything that you want to to ask no nope. no nope. i will have to go a little bit fast forward uh, on this because we are running out of time um but uh, okay Let's run to feedback loops then. Who got established feedback loops and improve collaborative and never was permanently for our last ones? I did. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm, okay, you can hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, 
so in this discussion, um, we have figured that um, we need to understand the importance of cooperation between peers uh, in order to continuously improve deliveries, way of work, um, strategies, and so on. And for this, we've mentioned that um, for this process, it's very important to introduce retrospectives in order to receive feedback and constant feedback and, in, in, and constant improve. Um, so we can hit the target to, to our customer, wh whoever it is. Um, and we have figured that this board allow, allows us to track and align the team in favor of its goals, uh, improve this cooperation, uh, the responsibility and the accountability of the team members, and also to promote those different feedback moments in order to continuously improve. Okay. Very well. Establish feedback loops. Who got that one? Yeah, uh, I can talk about that. Uh, I think it's going in the same way as Mariana was talking related with the, the feedback sessions. Uh, I think for establishing feedback loops, it means that you are establishing your deliverables. And when you deliver, you can establish your uh, sessions for feedbacks and, and involve the, the client and with you, all the stakeholders. So I think it's in the same way she was talking, Marianne was talking before. All right. So feedback loops and improve collaboratively and evolve experimentally. So what every adjunct practice and comment is basically this we try to do short cycles of work we try to collect as much feedback as possible and uh, we do it as a team together and we grow as you learn so we have several forms of feedback actually for example on kanban um, the kanban meeting a daily meeting or the daily scrum is a form of feedback is a feedback if i'm, I'm going on track with the plan that we made for the sprint if it's scrum uh, what did I done yesterday, what I'm going to do today, and this is also feedback. For example, replenishment is another way of feedback. When I go to plan, um, how are we planning to do this? Are we going in this way or the other way? So basically all the meetings are uh, points where you can collect feedback. And why is feedback important to us? First, because we want to evolve as a team. We want to understand what was going well, what was uh, going wrong, and we want to, on the next iterations, to try things differently and see what's going on. So we want to improve uh, every day. And uh, another way of feedback, and is probably the one that is most important to us, is to collect feedback from our clients. That's why we have demos. Um, a little bit different from Waterfall, because on Waterfall, for example, what we do is we have big front analysis, uh, big upfront design, then development and testing, and done. In uh, Agile, we try to do things differently. For example, it's like when we launch uh, a missile. What we do is, for example, when you launch a missile, the missile goes and then is always asking to the base, am I going in the right direction? Am I going in the right direction? Am I going in the right direction? And why does it do this? Because when you want to hit the target, uh, if it doesn't hit right in the center, it will hit probably somewhere near because all the time of this trajectory, he was asking if he's going in the right direction. And it's the same that we do when we ask for feedback in Agile. So basically, after every iteration, what we do is we ask, are we going in the right direction? If yes, OK, let's continue. If no, we adjust and we try uh, to make the necessary adaptations so we meet the client expectations in the end. And of course, you do this empirically and we do this together as a team. So it's important for us to every sprint, we try some experimentations, we try something new and see how it works and how it goes, okay? And I guess that, uh, that's it for today. I don't know if you guys have any questions. I'm open for some q and I have, I have one question. Sure. Thank you. Um, when you show it the, the, the board, when that board represent effort, that mm -hmm. effort is in hours or yeah, in, in the... Hours. That one was in hours. Okay. Okay. Show okay. you. Here, hours. Okay. 
that could be represented in the graph. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Also, known in this in this slide, where when you have the the whiteboard aligned, for example, for many teams, do you know some kind of uh, digital tool to to do the same kind of uh, of work? Sorry, could you repeat? Because they started speaking here in the conference. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Get the question. If you have uh, in your mind like one digital tool uh, for a team to to convert that whiteboards, that physical whiteboards to to digital for different teams. Hello. Okay. Sorry. I guess I got Hello. I lost you there for a moment. Okay. Okay. No problem. I was uh, asking you if you if you know. Uh, if there is some digital tool to replace that uh, sequence of whiteboards for uh, instance for for uh, for one team you have several whiteboards uh, which i th i think that that represented the uh, team specifically specifically if you All have right. one digital tool for these remote uh, days digital tool uh, for several teams i don't know any unless you get very creative for example you can use trello or even jira to put all the columns next to each other. Uh, but then if you have uh, several teams, probably what will happen is you will end up with a giant board and then it will be hard to manage. Okay. Um, okay. Normally when you do this kind of things, digital boards have some limitations. Um, and at this moment, I cannot know any tool that can do this kind of thing. But I can, okay. I can have a look and send you an email. Actually, no, no, if, uh, if I'm allowed, uh, yeah, sure. Sofia Bast from Portuguese Air Force. Uh, we have used um, Miro and created a, from a whiteboard uh, mm -hmm. that where you can have several teams. We just did it on a higher level. So we have teams and projects and then each team has its own so that the, the management can see the flow of projects and where teams are located. And then each team has its own uh, board that has these projects and uh, our projects are ongoing. So it's a sort of mix between the, the, your traditional Kanban board for only one project, one team. We have sort of mixed it all, yeah. Okay, that's one way to get creative. All right, any more questions? Yes, I was uh, curious if there is any specific prerequisite to team setup to ensure smooth flow and the least uh, um, uh, idle time. Sorry, could you repeat if there is something, some kind of? Yeah, if there is any prerequisite to team setup. So basically, if let's say we have these stages of development, mm -hmm. and for each stage of development, we set uh, a bit limit. Uh, mm -hmm. How team, what are the best practices or what would be your recommendation to guide team to those practices to organize themselves uh, around those stages so that we don't have a long idle time when, for example, certain team members, they have nothing to do because they don't want to violate the limit. Mm -hmm. As you suggested that uh, two, for example, is better than three in the example of this course. So what to do the third car, for example, uh, so that we don't manage people, but at the same time, we, uh, we give team opportunity to be involved. Okay. In something. So for what, if I understood correctly, you are asking uh, what to do in the situations where, for example, uh, people don't want to break whips, but they don't also don't want to be doing nothing. What to do yes. in those kind of situations? Yes. All right. So in Kanban is everything about getting done. So what I would say is first go check the board and see on the items more on the right. Is there anything there that I could help that will let those people reach done uh, faster? If yes, let me do that because do, by doing that, I will just get some space in my, in my board, in my floor. Right. Uh, also, if there's nothing that they can do at that time specifically for those colleagues, they will have to see if there's any impediment on the board. If yes, can I work in any of those impediments to try to solve them? Can I help a colleague solve an impediment that will give me flow on the board? 
If yes, I will try to fix that. If uh, there's nothing you can do regarding that, uh, well, I guess you can just go and try to find out, uh, do, do a spike, for example, on uh, some uh, thing that you wanted to learn, or it can, uh, can be, for example, improving the commentation, or we can go to look on the backlog of the retrospectives of things that the team wanted to improve uh, over the time and help with that. So basically, or it can be, for example, the person that is assigned to go to meetings during that week. So the people that are blocking the flow don't have to waste time on those things. So basically, all the other things that goes around uh, the work uh, that is not related with the work of the board itself, you can ask those people that are available to do, okay? So you can free time for others. Um, or for example, they can start doing pair programming uh, or they can pair with the people that are with the impediments or are doing a lot of work at that time so they can start learning what the people are doing so they can be multi-skill. So for the next time that that happens, uh, they can be there and help them um, do that work faster. I don't know, these are just some ideas. Thank uh, you. Can I, can I complement it or give an example? Yeah, sure. Um, in my particular case, I have a, a 14 element team um, and I, I established the whip of 10. Why? To, to force the knowledge transmission. If someone has, uh, is available and there is a, already 10 work in progress, he has to choose a partner to work with and uh, absorb the knowledge. You said you forced the whip of 10? Yes. But and, for person uh, or, for, or for the entire board? For the, the entire board. Ah, the entire board, yeah. And if if, if full, basically we have to pair. So we can have yes. knowledge transfer, yeah? Yes, yes. Per pro That's a idea. is a software, but pair programming is a very it's good a software, in this situation. Yes. Yeah, pair programming. <laughs> Sharing knowledge, you can put a senior with a junior so the junior can improve. Yeah, definitely. All right, more questions. Anyone? Uh, in replenishment, who is involved in the replenishment phase? Uh, because as per se, like analog uh, product owner position is not uh, um, is not part of Kanban, mm -hmm. as far as I understand. So how does the replenishment happen? Who owns, who, who knows the priorities? Okay, so in Kanban, you don't have uh, the figure of the product owner, but you have uh, something similar that is the service request manager. Okay, and the service request manager is more or less like a product owner. And that would be the person that is responsible for the priorities. Mm. Okay. Is it also only one person or it can be anyone? No, actually, like, it's not only just in Kanban, Marine Scrum, also everyone is responsible for the backlog. Uh, and everybody, and is, it, as, is a job as a team for us to work with the product owner uh, to decide on what to do next, how to do it. Uh, and it's a team effort. Uh, it's not only just the responsibility of the product owner to, to, to keep things uh, organized and prioritized is the, the ultimate owner. And if it comes to a time where a decision needs to be done is the one with the last word, but actually it's a team effort. Uh, all we do in Agile is all about team effort and we should work together as a team to achieve what is best for everyone. Thank you. Sorry, I've already phrased my question. So as product owner, only source of truth for, and then product owner collaborates with stakeholders, the same service manager is only one representative for outside of the team. It's not like there can be five uh, oh, sources of uh, requests. Sorry, sorry. Could, could you repeat? Could you repeat? So service request manager or something mm -hmm. like, uh, is it only one person, like only one entrance of those tickets or it can be like several people with the same role for the team? No, no, only one person. If you have mm -hmm. same with the same uh, several people with the same role, uh, you will end up uh, with a problem that is when things go south, which one will you answer first? You have five people with responsibility and five people asking you to do things and five people with different priorities. So 
if your team is on full capacity and all of those high things people need to deliver things for their uh, stakeholders who is the, they going to deliver first and that's when thing becomes complicated that's why we have the role of the service uh, manager of the product owner because he's a person that can centralize everything and try and can tell you okay the, the priorities are these ones and i want to you to do this one first and this one second so try to keep it simple and just have one person that communicates with stakeholders and get everything together instead of have several people uh, delivering work to one team. Did, uh, did, did I answer your thank question? You. Yes, thank you. Okay, any more questions, guys? Uh, uh, no, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. So that's it, guys. Bye. Thank you and see bye you bye. next time. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.